Hi, how are you? Matt Watson here from CarWire. So Rolls-Royce has a range of beautiful luxury cars and they are all powered by a glorious V12 engine. However, that is not sustainable. Rolls-Royce is having to go electric and their entire model lineup will be fully electric by 2030. And their first ever electric car will arrive next year and it will be called the Spectre. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you everything you need to know about it and show you what it's probably gonna look like. Buy, sell, car, wow. Back in 2011, Rolls-Royce flirted with an electric car. They built a prototype called the 102 EX. For Rolls-Royce, EX stands for experimental and it's for their concept cars. The car was essentially a 2011 Phantom, but they took out the V12 engine at the front and they fitted some batteries in its place. And then at the rear, it appears they fitted two electric motors. Now we can't be sure because Rolls-Royce didn't give full details on the car. They did say it was dual motor, but they didn't say the layout of it. Though the CGI does suggest that the electric car was rear wheel drive like that generation of Phantom. Now combined, the electric motors put out 390 horsepower and the battery capacity was 71 kilowatt hours. Now both those numbers are quite low by today's electric car standards. The car obviously never went into production, it was just a test bed. Now this new car that they're building is far more advanced and it'll have a different layout. Rolls-Royce has released this teaser video of the forthcoming Spectre. Now, if you look at it, you can see that it's not a four-door like the Phantom, it's actually a two-door like the Wraith. However, it's not based on the Wraith platform that's been converted to electric power. You see, the Wraith itself was actually based on an old BMW 7 Series platform from 2008. The Wraith has now gone off sale, so that platform is done. The new Spectre is actually based on the current Phantom platform, reason being that that platform was designed from the outset to be able to be converted to electric power. This is why Rolls-Royce itself says that the best way to think about the Spectre is like a Phantom Coupe. In fact, they had a Phantom Coupe from 2008 to 2016, which wasn't the Wraith. Rolls-Royce has also said that the Spectre will use that split headlight design similar to that used on the Phantom Coupe. But obviously it can't just be a retro looking vehicle. It needs to look to the future as well. And that's why it's probably gonna take some inspiration from the 103 EX concept car from 2019. Now this is a mad looking thing, isn't it? but the shape of the roof and the door design could influence the Spectre. Now, when you put these two elements together, that Phantom Coupe and this 103EX, this is what I think that the forthcoming Spectre could actually look like. Now, the design of this car isn't just about looking expensive, luxurious, and stately. Being an EV, aerodynamics, super important. It needs to still be as efficient as possible to maximize the range. So aerodynamics are going to play a big part of how this car looks. Engineers measure how aerodynamic a car is by using something called the coefficient of drag, shortened to CD. Now the measurement of a CD is actually based on a ratio and the ratio is how aerodynamic the car is compared to a block with the same frontal area. Now the old Rolls-Royce Phantom Coupe had a drag coefficient of 0.35 CD. Prototypes of this new Spectre have a drag coefficient of 0.26 CD, which is a big improvement, but it's not brilliant. The most aerodynamic car currently on sale is the Mercedes EQS, which has a drag coefficient of 0.26 to zero CD. Thing is, when you start designing cars to be as aerodynamic as possible, it really affects how cool they look. For instance, the EQS is nowhere near as good looking as its internal combustion engine equivalent, the S-Class. So if you think about the figure that Rolls-Royce is achieving with their car and the fact that it's still gonna look beautiful, they've done a good job. It isn't just the overall shape that Rolls has worked on to make sure the car is as aerodynamic as possible. They've made tiny little changes all over the car. For instance, the Spirit of Ecstasy will be ever so slightly smaller than on previous Rolls Royces. I know this is sort of a little bit like removing the sprinklings off a donut to reduce the calorie intake. You know, it's not gonna make that much of a difference, but you know what? Every little helps. Now you might be thinking, why has an electric car got a grill? Well, Rolls Royce's grill is famous. It's part of its brand identity, so it's not gonna be losing that in a hurry. Now to also add a little bit of bling to it, they're very likely to make it illuminated because illuminated grills are quite a big thing over at BMW, which of course is Rolls Royce's parent company. For instance, the i7 has an illuminated grill. The XM has an illuminated grill. So you can bet your life that they're gonna use an illuminated grill on this new Rolls Royce. Rolls-Royce won't just stop at borrowing some of BMW's bling. It's most likely gonna use some of its propulsion system as well. It's done this before. The Phantom's V12 engine is based on a BMW engine, as is the gearbox. And at the moment, BMW's cranking out loads of EVs. The i4, 
the i7, and there's more to come. So it makes sense that some of this technology will also be used by Rolls-Royce. One of the most obvious things to share is the battery pack. So Rolls-Royce has said that the battery pack for the Spectre will weigh about 700 kilos. I don't know why they just didn't say what the capacity is rather than the weight. I mean, what's that all about? I did a little bit of an investigation on the weight of the i7 and compared it to the normal 7 series. And based on map maths, I think the battery in the i7 weighs approximately 700 kilos, which means it's most likely to be the same battery pack they put into the Rolls-Royce. The capacity of that is 102 kilowatt hours. The claimed range of the i7 is between 370 and 390 miles on a full charge. Now, as the Rolls-Royce is gonna be heavier than that car, you know, because of all the animal hide and metal and wood trim, it's probably gonna be heavier. As a result, the range will fall but it should still be around the 350 mile mark. It makes sense that the Rolls-Royce Spectre uses the dual motors from the i7. Now combined, they put out 544 horsepower. However, there will be a higher performance version that comes out later, which produces 660 horsepower. Now, when you consider that the current V12 engine used in Rolls-Royce puts out 570 horsepower, you know that Rolls-Royce is gonna to wanna to make sure that their new electric car is more powerful than their current V12 offering. So it's probably gonna have around 600 horsepower. Not only will Rolls-Royce want to make sure that this new Spectre is more powerful than the current Rolls-Royce lineup, they're going to want to make sure it's the quickest car they do. After all, electric cars are known for being quick. So if you take, for example, the current Phantom can do 0-16 in 4.8 seconds, it's going to have to be quicker than that. So it's likely that Rolls-Royce will be looking for the car to do a 0-60 time of at least 4.5 seconds, perhaps even less. But do Rolls-Royce owners really care about 0-60 times? Well, no, not really. They do like performance, but they want effortless and relaxing performance. They want their cars to be quiet, and electric power is perfect for that. Also, a byproduct of making a car more slippery and aerodynamic, which you do for an electric car to make it more efficient, is that it reduces wind noise, makes it quieter. But Rolls-Royce are going beyond that. They've come up with a really clever way to make the Spectre super quiet and it involves the battery. They're gonna use that 700 kilogram pack to absorb noise from the tires and the road. It's really clever. It means that they don't actually have to fill it with so much soundproofing to make it super quiet. Hopefully they won't make it too quiet like they did originally with the Ghost where the car was so quiet that the moving sensation made people sick and they had to take some soundproofing out. I'm sure they've learned their lesson. Another benefit of the EV layout is that because you've got the batteries underneath the floor and you've got some small electric motors on the axle, there's no big internal combustion engine taking up room underneath the bonnet. So as they did with the 103 EX, they use that space for some rather cool bespoke luggage. And they're probably under this with a Spectre because it means that they'll be able to make some more money from their customers with this rather lovely luggage set. And that brings you on to the price, which obviously is something that Rolls-Royce buyers don't even think about because it's too vulgar and they're so rich it doesn't really matter Anyway, however, if you look at the price of the Wraith, that used to cost £250,000. If you look at the price of a current Phantom, they start at £400,000. Obviously, that is a flagship. The Spectre will be sold alongside it, so it can't cost more than the flagship. But being an EV, it's going to cost more to produce. EVs are just more expensive. So the price of the Spectre is going to be somewhere between the £400,000 of the Phantom and the two hundred and fifty pounds of what the Wraith used to cost. It's probably going to be around £350,000, is my reckoning but don't hold me to that. We'll find out for sure exactly how much it costs when it goes on sale in the end of 2023. I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a like. If you click on those windows there, you can watch some more videos. And if you click on that box there, you can go to CarWow to see how much money you can save on your next car. Thanks for watching.